Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, it's Coronation Day and many people are very excited. Uh, the streets around Westminster Abbey have been filled with people camping overnight. There's a lot of drunk people with bottles of wine and uh, very little clothing sleeping on the streets. It's very sad. It really looks like poverty with some of these people. They've arrived in London with one sheet or one blanket to cover them, maybe a pillow, and they want to camp outside either the palace or somewhere near Westminster Abbey. Um, when I first saw the pictures, I was a bit alarmed because they all seem to be drinking heavily. But then that is the face of the UK. For those of you who unfortunately have had to deal with British tourists in other countries, you know that's what we do. We get very drunk and then create problems on the street. What I'm worried about is the sanitary conditions. I mean, I really hope that there's toilets there and places for them to wash. You know, it sounds a bit medieval, doesn't it? You walk for miles without being able to wash yourself uh, to see the king. It, it, it sounds a little bit strange. I certainly wouldn't do it. But then some English people really do get very excited at this kind of thing. And there is, because of the media and social media, this big air of excitement right now. So I can kind of understand that. Um, the king is being crowned today at 11 o'clock, so that's actually very early. I thought it would be 2 or 3 o'clock and then they'd be singing badly into the evening. But actually, no, it's, uh, it's at 11 o'clock, so they'll be singing badly into the afternoon and then going home to have quiche, I suppose, and then it'll all be forgotten. Um... It's interesting, isn't it, how these things can become very political. Madame Tussauds, you know, the waxworks in London, they apparently uh, have rearranged their wax statues to commemorate the day. So for them, Harry is not displayed near the other royals because, of course, he's separated from them. Uh, so they brought him back together, standing with William and Kate and the mother and father, well, Charles, the father, the mother's the stepmother, isn't she? Diana's the real the real mother there. She's not nowhere to be seen. Um, so they're all standing together in Madame Tussauds today because it's coronation day. Uh, Meghan and Harry had already been separated. Meghan Markle is in the celebrities' parts whereas Harry is with the royals, but not standing with them. So they'll all be brought together again today. Doesn't it just remind you of those Christmas uh, scenes? You know, at Christmas, they always bring out Jesus and Mary and then put the baby in the crib, don't they, on the 25th of December? <laughs> so it's kind of like that, isn't it? Coronation day, so they bring the royals and put them all together. Uh, so interesting. I still think Camilla looks a bit like that dark-haired singer from the group ABBA, uh, but they're both of Germanic roots, so I guess that's why. Actually, I'd be surprised if she isn't there or somewhere around there because she's very friendly with the royals, isn't she? Or maybe it's just the Swedish royals she's friendly with because uh, um, ABBA... And the Swedish royals were very close, weren't they? In fact, that song Dancing Queen was written for the Queen of Sweden, wasn't it? Anyway, back to the UK royals. So, yes, 11 o'clock today, uh, they'll be, they'll be, um, uh, they'll, they'll be crowned, the king and queen. Um, then they'll be going home to have their quiche, uh, it's a public holiday here on Monday, so I won't be working, as you probably noticed from my calendar. Uh, there's big screens all around London displaying the coronation uh, in 
um, Hyde Park, St. James's Park, uh, all of the Royal Parks actually have screens in them, I think. Uh, also at Croydon and Walthamstow, Wembley as well, will have the Royals there uh, being displayed. So let's hope it all goes well. Um, what else can I tell you? Uh, yeah, well, well, people have been uh, arriving since early. Already there's people uh, at Westminster Abbey uh, being ushered in. Of course, very, very famous people from our political world. So they're all inside already. Um, and that's about it. I think that's all I can tell you so far. The railway stations are beginning to look a bit strange because our military are all arriving by train. So they're all shuffling on and off trains. Uh, men with those red suits and big busby caps. Uh, so they're all wandering around. Um, there's also artists standing on the streets who've been hired, presumably by the royals or by the military, to paint what's happening. Doesn't it just give you a feeling of... Uh, medieval times it doesn't feel right somehow does it um yeah apparently uh madame tussauds has just unveiled a new statue of camilla in wax it looks really creepy i mean wax works look creepy anyway especially if you're from that generation of horror movies in the 70s and 80s do you remember there was one about the wax works where they come alive and kill everyone uh, before zombies became fashionable. Yeah, it looks a bit like that. She looks a little bit creepy. Well, uh, wax has a weakness. You just have to turn up the heat and they melt. Although I think that would make them even more creepy, I think. Um, anyway, so yeah, if you do get the chance, you can you can have a look at that. Um, Madame Tussauds, yeah, they opened a new one in India, didn't they, in 2017? There's one in Hollywood, one in Florida. So yeah, they're very famous. I think they're owned by, is it the Merlin Group owned them now? It's some kind of Arab Emirate consortium, I think. Yeah, it's very interesting. But very political, you know, the way they move people or simply remove people. There was a case recently, they've taken down a statue of Cheryl Cole. Uh, I don't know why, whether it's because they think she's no longer famous. Um, but yeah, they removed her recently. That made headline news. Uh, so yeah, and that's the, the royal coronation. Then they were rushing home to have quiche. And no doubt the wine will be flowing. I'm really alarmed by all these people on the streets drinking. I mean, can't we just realize that being sober is not is not a bad way to be? I'm wondering if some people are able to stay sober for events like this. Um, the other thing is, in the north, there's no talk of the coronation. Of course, they're trying to sell us things with the flag on there, but uh, there's no screens, there's no events. People here really aren't interested. It's not that they don't like the royals, it's just, I think they're just not interested, you know. So, another point. Um, so, I'll be away on Monday. Just a, a little point on italki bookings. I'm still getting a really high number of cancellations. Two of you have asked this week um, about my cancellation procedure and whether they should just mark a lesson as confirmed or whether they should try to reschedule a lesson if they come late or if they don't come to the lesson. Um, I really don't get involved in that kind of stuff. You're not children. You all know what needs to be done. If you come to a lesson late, it's your problem. You you need to sort it out. I'm, I'm not going to get involved in that. I'm okay with rescheduling up to a point, but if you do this regularly, you will eventually reach a point where I don't let you book more lessons. Or I will restrict your uh, lessons. So, for example, there's a couple of you now 
who've cancelled more than 50% of your packages. So you'll be told, sorry, but you can only have lessons once every two weeks or once every three weeks uh, or not at all. You'll need to wait for a few months. It's not a punishment. It's just because there's loads of people who need that time. And whether you pay me or not for a lesson that you don't attend, uh, you're still wasting my time and wasting your time as well. So that's unsustainable. That can't continue. Once or twice, I, I'm okay with. But you go beyond that, then you will be refused bookings in the future or your bookings will be restricted uh, to once a week, once a fortnight or more. Or you might be asked to wait a month before you book it anymore. So just so that you know, so I don't actually have a cancellation process where I ask you to uh, confirm the lesson or reschedule, reschedule the lesson. Uh, you be asked to make your own decision on that. I don't get involved and you'll need to wait for the system to uh, effectively uh, do that for you. Uh, I won't be running around clicking buttons to quickly allow you to reschedule. Uh, and if you do that, as far as I'm concerned, you go right to the back of the queue. So if you ask me for, oh, please, can I have a lesson this week because I haven't booked it and your calendar's full, the answer will be, well, you had your chance, you cancelled your last lesson, so no. And that's it. I don't really want to begin being uh, difficult with people, but I've already removed another six spaces from my calendar to stop so many cancellations happening because six cancellations is one day's work for me, more or less. So I'm going to work less so that you can't cancel more. Okay. And if you are genuinely looking for a lesson and you're not someone who cancels a lot, just send me a message because now there's lots of free time available, but it's not advertised on my calendar until I can get rid of a few of these people who continually cancel. Right, uh, that's it for me. So I hope you found this helpful and I'll catch up with you all again soon. Okay, see you. Bye.